Stop recording video. Dip. Stop recording video. Button. You guys know. Maybe maybe he's gotta go make an announcement. Yeah. you Yeah. It's a small enough room, he'll probably just yell. Um, so if you guys know or didn't know, you probably didn't know. Uh, I've been working on the Resident Evil series since 1997. Um, I was cast as Chris Redfield in the Code Veronica series. And that motion capture happened out in Japan. That was the first game that they actually incorporated motion capture. The first Resident Evil game that they incorporated motion capture. All the games prior to that were all hand animated. Um, and the, really around that time, the only motion capture games were like Tekken and uh, like some fighting games. And like Final Fantasy would use some motion capture during their cutscenes back then. But most games, motion capture was a very new thing. It was very experimental. And the usages of it in the games was relatively new and experimental. Um, in 1997, yeah. So I was sort of uh, shown this technology in the early stages, and I got to work with it in its early stages. And luckily, because of that experience, um, I was able to sort of be on the cutting edge and then create uh, my company, uh, which later uh, we created a whole company around motion capture and the technology and uh, created Just Cause Productions uh, with my partner out in Japan. And then we started um, not only doing the motion capture, but also, I should say, not initially we were hiring actors to perform and do motion capture for these video games. But now in addition to that, we also had the technical capabilities we were hired by game companies like Capcom to produce the motion capture and the cinematics for various video games. And we had a pretty good success with Resident Evil 5. And then we were called to do Resident Evil 6. And for Resident Evil 6, we held castings and we had many characters to cast. And uh, Jason here, who I kept calling in for all these motion capture gigs <laughs> over the years because I knew he was, you know, he's the bomb. He can act, he can do some really good stuff. Uh, we worked together on Power Rangers and um, and he just, it, it, he wasn't booking it, but everybody loved him and, and the guys in Capcom, they would remember his auditions and they're like, yeah, we like this guy, we like this guy. It just wasn't the, the right fit. And then uh, finally for Resident Evil 6, he auditioned for the part of Leon and Boom. That was it. Boom. He was Leon. Um, now, for the voices, on the other hand, for all of us, even Chris Redfield, for me, even though I've been there for years, they had already used, they already had sort of their their go to voice guys established. Um, and they were planning to use those guys from the, from the get go, so they wanted. Now, what they've done over the years is some of those older voice actors weren't available or tried to jack their prices up really high that would spur the budgets and then Capcom would do what's called voice matching. They would find somebody that's close to that voice and or they'd have auditions to four people to come in and voice match. And in this case, the, Le the Leon actor, the guy who did Leon in the past, um, I forget, there was some issue with the schedule or something uh, like that and, um, and he didn't, at the last, I think they were, we were going to go with him, and at the last minute, it didn't work out. So they held an audition, and Matt Mercer seemed to be hmm. the closest oh, really? match. I you know that? that? You know that? I know that, but I didn't yeah. know that that happened to him. I think that, that was, it wasn't initially. I thought he was always one. No, no, he came in at the last minute and did a voice match, and his voice match sounded very almost like a lot of people couldn't tell the difference. Um, but yet, actually, in the end, our directors actually thought his performance was better than me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but at least, and maybe not at the end product, but able to direct. They thought he was easier to work with. So, um, 
which sucks because you know we put our hearts and souls into these characters doing the motion capture. You're going to see not just the motion capture. We did uh, a process which Capcom really liked. We started it on Devil May Cry and uh, sort of continued it. And in Resident Evil 6, we really got into it. Uh, we did we do what's called video storyboarding. It's sort of like a a rehearsal, a test, a previs of sorts for the what's gonna the actual final game is gonna be like. But instead of uh, how many of you guys know what previs is? Previsualization in the films. Um. Yeah, back there. So uh, if you guys watched behind the scenes of any Blu-rays or stuff when other movies are being made, so almost every big budget film that's happening right now uses uh, an art form called visualization where they use computer graphics or um, they sort of do a, a template rehearsal of what the scene cut by cut what the scene is going to end up being in the final product and what this does is it, it allows the filmmakers and the producers and everybody to sort of see how the flow of things without spending all the money that it costs to create a big budget action scene so you can sort of get a, a template of it. Now in the video game world, we, uh, we're we already in the CGI realms. In the, in the live action world, they use the CGI to do the previs for the, for, the, uh, for the final live action product. We did sort of the reverse, where we are the live action characters and we're very quickly shooting and editing and creating a template uh, with live action and the live action experience before we get to the CGI because in this realm, the CGI costs a lot of money to, um, to sort of process the, the animations and put on all of the fancy graphics. And the graphics and the it costs a Zero, lot of seven, so eleven. We uh, did the reverse of what the film industry is doing, but still conceptually, it's still the same thing. It's a template uh, rehearsal for what the main product is. And uh, we sort of did this phase. It was sort of for us, it was like a dress rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, dress rehearsal. Um, and we did it without, uh, we didn't really rehearse much at all. It was like, here's your lines, put on these clothes, and go out there and do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was our rehearsal. And we'd sort of work it out on set there a little bit. Um, but the main reason, and a lot of people, and even the actors are like, why are we this is a lot of effort. Why are we doing all this? And we explained to them that in the video game making process, Capcom uh, spends years making the game. And they're designing levels and they're creating these things. And these cutscenes are, um, they have a conceptual idea of what the cutscene is going to be. But things change. Mechanics of the games, uh, you may be going in the door this way and then all of a sudden, uh, think something changes and now you're going to come in the door that way and as they put the cutscenes together they kind of see what works and what doesn't so for them this video storyboard phase was key into creating both the cinematics for the game in the final story modes as well as the game mechanics so we and for us it was a dress rehearsal so everybody's getting something out of this essentially and uh and I think the best part is what I'm going to show you today is we get we just get to show off the cool shit we did. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen this. Whatever you show me, I've never seen it. So I've never seen this as well. So let's go to. Oh well, let me talk a little bit before we actually go into this video storyboard phase. To prepare ourselves for the uh, for the video game, we did a lot of training, right? We sort of did gun training uh, to try to handle weapons in a real scenario because we're trying to add. We're trying to make these video games as realistic as possible. Even Stop recording video. There, Zero, stories, nine, twenty-seven. running around and explosions and all this stuff. Mm. But we're sort of trying to add uh, less of a cheese factor and bring them down to earth to a certain extent. So uh, we put all of our actors through some training and we actually went out to the range and shot real guns and with real live rounds and got the feel with those, with the gun experience was and change guns. We had a Anthony who was sort of yeah, our, our um, gun trainer, handler, and he's like the 
but he does he does it for all big budget movies now and he's done he's exploded as he should he's got good stuff let's go back one uh, I want to show uh, everybody let's go to Leon yeah gun action gun test so this is Jake Sam yeah I'm gonna call this yeah oh thank you man. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna make sure you're, you walk away with this stuff. Oh, you will, yeah. <laughs> Is it not playing? Uh, they're okay on audio on this one. So uh, we went in uh, a day, we did, did we do indoors airsoft stuff too? Some basic stuff, I think we just yeah. did. We did like a day of airsoft uh, gun handling without the live ammo, obviously. And make sure everybody's you know comfortable and holding the gun and, um, and techniques and responsible. And then uh, then we went out and did you know day here at the gun range and shooting all types of guns, automatic, semi-automatic, um, shotguns. And then we can go. I got to play around. Let's go to. The, I sort of did a double go to real gun day. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, they would frown upon this at the, uh, at the shooting range. They wouldn't recommend doing this, but this is sort of like my um, fun. Especially with five rounds, they were like, no, you're not going to do this. <laughs> Stop recording video. Button. Zero. Eleven. Forty five. So you can go cut that video. Yeah. Um, not. All right, so now let's go into the video storyboards. Uh, and go into video storyboard, JC underscore is the list. This is kind of a, a, a video that's going to show you the, the oh, where are the sound on? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm able yeah. to hear it. I'll be talking over it. It's okay, keep playing it and I'll talk over it. Um, so this just is sort of shows how much production value we actually put into these video storyboards, even though we didn't really have much money, but we try to make them look as good as possible. And, um, and maybe JC's been talking about the hair. <laughs> So it was interesting having this, this thing on because I constantly wanted to just flip this out of my hair. <laughs> but um, I was amazed at the attention to detail that you guys and Capcom did. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I mean, wow. And, and as, as you can see from the video storyboards, a lot of it did transfer into the final product. Uh, just in the angles and the way it was shot. And um, oh, yeah, that's yeah, perfect. So we, we really got. Um, a lot comes out of it, so it's not, there's a lot of, like I said, everybody gets something out of these. Capcom, the, the filmmakers, and almost, you know, shot by shot. This is really, really cool. Who do you know? Witness, she's the one who did all this! No, it wasn't her, it was Simmons. Advisor. I lost all my men because of her! I lost over 70,000 people, including the president, because of Simmons. Um, oh, thanks. All right, let's. 
so some of these actually dams in some of these, um, which hopefully will make a, an appearance in here. Uh, it's kind of, I know, we're going to crash the other panel, so I thought, why not have them crash this one? Uh, let's go to the Leon test. So this is actually the first sort of um, storyboard that we did, and we brought Jason in. Um, I think, did you audition for this one, or did we bring you in before this? I did. Okay. And this was sort of to prove a uh, proof of concept to the, the detail of the video storyboards. And we were sort of showing, is this before we got your wig or did we get your wig? Yeah, I think this was pre-wig. Say <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever you want. And this is me as the president. <laughs> Turn into a zombie. I didn't know my name. Yes. Thank God you two are all right. Me too. How do you know her? That's Elena Martha. She's been with the Secret Service since last year. I can't tell you how good it is to hear you're both all right. Now, I hate to cut the introduction short, but I need a report on your situation. To give it to you straight. What? Why did Reggie you? was already infected by the time we found him. Leon did what he had to do. He's ignored. All right. I'll submit the report. You two just focus on getting the hell out of here. The virus has already spread three miles past the campus perimeter, and it's not slowing down. We need to hurry. We gotta get to St. Grace's Cathedral first. Leon's got a leader that might tell us he's responsible for all this. Leon, is that true? Um, yeah, I think I may have some. Roger that. I'll map out the safest access route. Keep your radio on. So I can lead? Then it'll be done with me. So that was good, like, proof of concept. Capcom was happy. They're like, yeah, okay. We approve you. We, they gave us the budget to then go and move forward to the next stage. Let's see, um, which a few months later. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that one is, but yeah, let's see what that. Fast forward to it. Okay, this is the full scene of the Marcy. Witness? She's the one who did all this! It wasn't her. It was Simmons, the National Security Advisor. I lost all my men because of her! I lost over 70,000 people, including the President! That's a Simmons. She's working for me, Uncle. Do you know what that means?
yeah, there's, there's more, but I, I want to now go into one of the ones with Dan. Um, let's go to the one on the left. Let me uh, watch this for a second. Might not be. Can you fast forward it? Yeah, you can just leave it there. No, no, no. So these are a bunch of uh, Chinese soldiers getting high on some sort of drug that's turning them into zombies, but it doesn't have any effect on him. This was some kind of energy boost to it. How many guys know Troy Baker? I interviewed him. So, unfortunately, Troy's a main actor, but he doesn't have the physical training that a lot of us Power Ranger guys have gone through. And um, this, <laughs> Troy magically turns into Dan South a little bit. We did these uh, for Catcom. It was just a template, and it doesn't. I mean, yeah, we tried to make Dan look as much like Troy as possible. Mm. <laughs> Some quantum uh, power. But because we're doing the um, motion capture, it doesn't really matter. It's just about, all about the physical movements. And uh, in this case, we can cut seamlessly with the motion capture and put Dan in there to do the cool action stuff, and then go back to Troy. No, we don't know. Oh, you kind of know in these, but these were not going to be shown in public, and you guys are going to have an exclusive kind of behind the scenes to let it know. Uh, we'll wait for Dan to come in again before we can embarrass him with some more. <laughs> it's crazy wait because we have some more shots there. But let's go uh, out of it. Yes? Um, so when you guys do all these stunts, are you guys like have padding on it or, or anything? Or? Stop recording video. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Twenty-two. Forty-eight. In the stomach and shoved into the wall. I think he put a little pad in there, yeah. Yeah, because I imagine, I heard, the, were those tons of sound effects, or like the sound of the sound? No, there was sound. We put it in there. Oh, so I'm saying, if, if, if those punched the man. Yeah, no, they don't. Really right there. That, that's, yeah, that would suck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, with motion capture, we had, we're a little limited to the pads that we can put in. Yeah. Because of the suits have to be, you know, correct and, and uh, conform to the body. But luckily, we can pad the ground and everywhere around us. Yeah. So when we fall, we can actually hit pads as in, instead of hitting concrete, which we do in the live action movies. So um, yeah. it's, awesome. yeah, it's, it's and in Power Rangers, trust me, I hit a lot of concrete in my day. Um, mm. So <laughs> it was uh, a learning experience. You learn how to fall and not hit the concrete because you're in spandex, so you can't really hide pads that much. And um, I, on a daily basis, I would come <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> you get chiropractor. Yes, I had a regular, regular chiropractor. Uh, did this. Um, so let's go. I just want to talk really quick, and then we're going to take some questions. Stop recording video. So Button. The Zero. Twenty-four. Twelve. Um, so I don't have anything from the motion, motion capture. Well, that sucks. Um, in, so that's sort of the process. So what happens then is we, we do all these video storyboards. We take a break. Uh, we took like over the holidays or something maybe. And then Capcom would go and do their thing and put it into their computers and see what worked and see what didn't. Then a lot of notes would come back sometimes. Nothing would come back. It would seem exactly the way we originally did it. And then uh, then we moved into the motion capture phase. And then over the span of about four or five months, it was kind of we'd come in and do motion capture. And it was a long process. I was very, um, like I said, I, I thank, thank Ruben for that. I, I think from start to finish, it was almost a couple of years. Yeah. It's a big, big process. 
process and Capcom is very, very specific, like I said, going to the gun range and spending gazillions of dollars for us to shoot live ammo. Um, and then, uh, like I said, the dress rehearsal was like doing a stage performance. It was like we, we did a rehearsal for a couple of weeks, came back and did it again. And it was very, very, um, I mean, they were very specific in the way Leanne walked, the way he held the gun. Um, so I was really impressed by that. It, it was really cool how much they cared. And we just missed you in the wig, Danny Boy. No, we got more. Now that he's Woo! here. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Dan Southwick Show. Woo! What are you guys doing? So uh, let's go to the next video storyboard. Is, is that one? Yeah, let's go to that one. Stop recording video.